Hey everyone, Brad here with Brad's Books. Now today I have just finished reading The Oracle of Maracor by Gregory Maguire and I got it through Amazon. Read it here on my Kindle. There we go. So it just came out today. I hadn't intended to read it all in one day but it was just so good. It was funny and really extended the scope of the law of Oz in a way that I hadn't expected, especially having The Wicked Years be a finished series and then finished with rain dropping off the Grimmery into the, the waters, um, the oceans beyond Oz, and then getting the Brides of Miracle and like, whoop, we're going off a completely new way. I'm like, where is he going with this? And I really, really liked where he went with this book. So. To read the Oracle of Maracor, do I think you need to have read the step up above the Brides of Maracor? Yes. I think there's a lot going on and this is very much part two. So I really enjoyed the Brides of Maracor. So if you haven't read the Brides of Maracor and you're interested in the Oracle of Maracor and you liked Oz, um, my three sentence summary would be if you like the idea of the, the green, green skin girl who is thrust into a political and religious world that she has no idea of how it works but she has a sense of right and wrong she has this access to magic but it feels like it's been taken from her as she has also lost her memory so all she can really go off on the strange world that she sees around her is what her instincts tell her um, and how people respond to her as the green-skinned witch. I think she has a lot of Elthaba's strengths, being quite um, headstrong and determined, but she also doesn't have a lot of Elthaba's skills, which is her um, knowledge of self, who she was, where she came from. Um, that's been that's been taken from Rain. So really interesting set of books, um, looking at. Um, religion, um, government, um, myth, um, women-led societies and how they can be affected by uh, a single man. Oh, that's really interesting. And none of that gives the book any source of justice. But yes, I'd recommend you go back and look at the um, oracles, um, the Brides of Miracle for reading the Oracle of Miracle. Do I think that you need to have read The Wicked Years? Well, they're great books, <laughs> so I would read them, 100% I would read them. Um, but I think that Gregory Maguire's done really well here is that and the character of Lear, for example, if you've never heard of who Lear is, you find out in the book that it's Rain's dad um, and you get enough information given to you so you can follow along with the story. But also I, as a reader who knows who Lear is, I don't feel like I'm getting spoken down to or I'm getting additional information retold me for the sake of a new reader. So it comes together really, really well. Okay, so the Oracle of Miracle, what's it about? Um, Rain and Cozy are on the run from the law. We've got the Maricor, its government's fallen. The Brides of Maricor, the religious sect who live on the island, who have daily prayer and self scarification, um, which is meant to protect the ways of the world. It's all been thrown into chaos. We've got an invading armies. So the people are going from the main city of Maricor and they're spreading out um, out into the, the wilderness. Reigns with Cozy. Uh, we also have Lucy uh, Bick uh, with his son uh, Leon Rix back on the farm. And we also have a new character who keep, I met met them today. And keep in mind, my pronunciations of words are terrible in my head. Um, Tyseron, that's how I pronounce it in my head. Keep in mind that I'm the guy who read. Um, the Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, and I thought there was a wonderful character named Sia Barn. Then I found out later on in the audio version that it was Siobhan. So take my my name is how you, you will. Um, and we also have Burden there, so the, the king. So they're separately on this separate path um, of trying to just find safety. Um, but also their goal is to hide 
and hopefully get rid of um, the Fist of Miracle, so the, which we were talking about in the first book, which Cozy and the Brides were protecting. It's now loose and it's dangerous, and this new enemy wants it. That's loosely what the book's about, but that's kind of the framework, the structure around it. I think what we really see is um, Rain really finding herself, what her, without her memories truly there, they're, they're sort of coming back. She has access to some of them. She's really questioning um, who she is, what kind of successes she's had in her life, um, who has stuck by her. And she's really trying to kind of recover from this idea of Tip being who he was, um, person that she loved, and then how he was changed into the Ozma and how that really changed everything for Rain and how she's used to things being taken away from her. Um, yeah, really interesting story. So I really recommend that you read it. I thought it was really uh, funny. Some really awesome um, lines in there. Really funny. I like that kind of Gregory Maguire's books, like that, that sarcasm and that wit and how um, things that are, apologies if the lights are changing <laughs> very often. I can see that on the phone there as I move forward and back. Um, how you've, I'm like, if there is a character who's going to be held high on a pedestal in a Gregory Maguire novel, uh, within a few minutes, we're going to find out um, the truth about them. <laughs> um, the truth about their lives, probably the stains on their clothes and their like probably like bowel habits or something like that. Like no one is afforded any chance to do um just be able to, you know, um, everyone's shortcomings are available for the world to see. No one's given any sort of pass. So, yeah, I thoroughly recommend you read this book for all the points that I've said. I don't want to repeat myself too often. I want to keep this short. Really great book. Really enjoyed it. Couldn't put it down. Finished it in, I don't know. I want to... I had a break in the middle, so um, but it was good. So I put my glasses on, sorry, there's reflection. Some things that I really liked in this book. So if you've read it from here on in, just things to, that I sort of really appreciated. For starters, there's a massive spoiler in this book that I'm not going to spoil because I want you to read it. <laughs> I want you to read it because um, I think that it's worthwhile. And it's almost like kind of like that detective story where you're like, I had suspicions. I had one suspicion in the back of my head about a certain scene, a certain character. And yeah, I, 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 I thought about it. I had a 5% chance, wouldn't that be funny? But then when, yeah, great read. So go read it. Other things I really like, I really like that we spoke about the a whole, um, a whole lot in this book. I'm a massive fan of Lee and I don't think that's, um, I think it's such a great character. So any information that I can get on Lear or Candle, I really, really want. So um, I think that we found out here that um, they said that Candle is a Quadling woman from the south of Quadling, uh, left Lear for incompatibility. <laughs> That's a pregnant word, incompatibility. Uh, Lear, uh, completive man who lived alone um, on an isolated lake in the outback of Oz. Outback of Oz. Immediately, I thought of like Outback Australia. Um, I'm like, oh, good old, good old Leah. But um, but yeah. Um, this canary just talking about Leah, like saying that he loves him. I love Leah, and that's so I love Rain, and I, I'm not gonna let him down. I'm gonna protect her. So I thought that was really, that was really great. Um, um yeah, Lee, it was mentioned that, um, that Lee, he wasn't looking, um, he was looking to dominate, but to, to duck away and be still. Yeah. So I was glad to get those references and even have some references to some other, um, characters in the book. I think that I was thinking about, um, just throughout the book, I was trying to think back to Rain's family tree. So I'm like, okay, so we've got 
frame and then obviously we've got Leah and Candle uh, above her and then we get to um, Elphaba and she was with Fiero and then above Elphaba there was well the man who kind of well, raised her, the eminent throb. Then her mother, whose name escapes me at the moment. But I'm trying to think. I was thinking that Elphaba's father was, and I have to go back and read Wicked. I was thinking that Elphaba's father was, um, I think he spoke Wahati, and I think that he was a quadling. That's what I thought. He was around. And I, I'm trying to think of his name. And I know that it wasn't Candle. <sighs> Obviously. Um, but I can't remember what it was. I can picture him in my head. But I can't remember his name. But anyway. Just as... If you've read, you read. But if not, I was just kind of... I'm just trying to figure things out. But anyway. Um, I really liked Lou Schools. I thought he was a really good character. And he was written really well and he's with his son uh Leonrix. Um they had quite a bit of that kind of fighting which makes sense between both of them. I think that Lou Schools has raised his son in a certain way to um respect authority and do what's right. Um but the problem is that when the, the adolescent comes through and their authority that he respects and to do what's right when he's locked onto it and identified it and is different to what his father perceives as that kind of correct answer. Like, so you have that kind of, uh, the infighting between the two of them. Um, Cozy, I think she was a good character. Uh, Iskinari, he was really great. Um, he was really good, funny, and it was great. So the characters, I was really, really interested in So I say Fist of Marika, before I meant the Fist of Mara, my apologies, my apologies. I was really interested in uh, Yerkius. Yerkius? Yeah. Um, spirit of the copper water on this side of the the high um, Chara, Chara, Chara. It's just interesting, the idea of him rising from the ground and how, how tall he was. And then later on, when he came down the river, the river, and um, naked, um, you could see him from the waist up as he was going through the water and how he saved them. And there was also that um, God who's shown interestingly both to Liskills and his son in two different novels. He only wore that kind of um, that necklace. I thought that was really interesting, um, and I, I like that whole idea of mythology, and I'd love to to see more of that. I thought that the discussions of the the green man was really interesting because I, I I knew I, I did some reading on that a few years back and even the tarot cards that came out I'm like wow that's all interesting um, and it kind of gave me suspicions which led towards the spoiler but I thought that was really I thought it was really good. Is there anything else here that I particularly liked about it? No. I like the character of Rain. I think that she's really, she's really quite strong and strong people sometimes can be the ones most, um, most hurt. So they, they kind of, they create every scenario and where they might have to pr protect themselves or potentially feel like they're the ones who need to take the hurt on so others don't have to. I really like the idea of a story being a seed and a story being a, a room with an open door and an exit door and a story can lead to a story. I thought that was all really, that was all really quite interesting. I thought that Burden was interesting. A very different character from the Brides of Maracol. Um, when he's in position of like regal strength to to just having to be mildly threatening and relying on people who really this cause was really quite you know, honor bound and quite loyal to the king 
but the king still threatened him and still ordered him. Um, but then it turns out that more burden potentially was quite a, a burden, yeah. So <laughs> hence probably the name uh, to bear. No, I thought this book was really, really great. I was well worth the wait. I really appreciated the chance to, to go back to Maricor to see where this new story, this new room, this new seed, this new offshoot of a, from the world of Oz, what it could provide. And I think it was a really great read. And I'm very interested for The Witch of Maricor, uh, the next book. I think it's gonna be really interesting. I, big fan of Lee and um, I think that any information that I can get from any book on Lee I'm going to be very happy with. It's really one of my favourite literary characters. Um, so I'm very very hopeful for the next book but anyway I've spoken enough. Great book. Definitely if you like Wicked I'd thoroughly recommend reading either series from start to finish. But if you're new to the um, Another Day series, I'd start with The Brides of Miracle and then The Oracle of Miracle. And then we'll go to The Witch of Miracle and see what we'll go from there. But if you've read the book, let me know what you think. And um, yeah, so once again, apologies for this recording setup. I'm just always on the road, but I really enjoyed this book. And the last time I read the, well, <clears throat> the first time I read the, um, the Brothers of Miracle, I was away with work and it was pretty, pretty intense and it was a pretty lousy time. So it was great. And now this time I get to read the Oracle of Miracle, then I'm home on leave. So I had, <laughs> I had the, um, I had the entire week to myself, which is really great. So anyway, you take care and uh, I'll see you next time.